for mercy, which I am in great need of. Um, this is a testament to Anthony Geary and his humility and his love and graciousness towards me. I want to thank Rebecca Herbst, um, all the actors of General Hospital, the directors, uh, Jill Farron Phelps, Bob Guza, my wife Elisa, my children, Caleb, Adora, and Titus, uh, my parents, my brother and sister. Um, I just have so many people to thank. Uh, my godfather, Gary Hart. Uh, it's an incredible thing that we do, putting 60 to 80 pages a, a, a day on the air. It's insane. And uh, I'm humbled to be here. So thank you all very much. Thank you to the Academy. And also um, thank you to all the, the monks on Mount Athos who are ceaselessly praying for the life of the world. Thank you. 2007, um, I was doing a film in Romania. And uh, I had a week off from filming and we went to Rome. My wife is Italian, so we wanted to visit Rome. And I was raised Protestant, so I knew nothing about the Orthodox Church. But I loved God very much, and I had been really seeking Him since I was about 12 years old, reading the scriptures and um, cultivating some form of, of prayer life. And when we were visiting Rome, we were overwhelmed by the presence of, of the martyrs and the saints to, to walk the streets where St. Paul and St. Peter walked. And when we went into the Colosseum, there was a, a huge cross and my wife said, why is there a, a cross in the Colosseum? And then we got up closer and realized it was a monument to the martyrs. And something just came over us. We, we could feel it in the air. And I knew being there that I had to start reading Christian history. And I had been reading the scriptures for many years, but I, I knew nothing of Christian history. I didn't know what happened after the book of Acts. <laughs> And so I started reading and I read uh, the Fathers of the Church, St. Ignatius of Antioch, his letters, and St. Justin Martyr, St. Clement of Rome, so on, um, St. Cyprian of Carthage, and just uh, my mind started to open up. My heart began to open up. <clears throat> and I wanted to know because in America there are 20, 30,000 different denominations, different churches, and it just didn't make sense to me. So I spent about three and a half years reading Christian history. Still had not discovered the Orthodox Church because it's, it's all Catholic and Protestant literature in, uh, in America. And finally, by the grace of God, um, I... I was praying and, and the thought came into my mind because I was in despair because I could no longer be Protestant but my heart, I couldn't become Catholic but I wanted, I wanted the real church, the church that I was reading in, in, in the letters of the fathers, I wanted that church, I wanted to be a part of that and I couldn't find it and this thought came in in my mind to really look at the great schism, to study what happened and as soon as that took place everything everything opened up it was like the stars aligned and that whole search was the the prayer was beginning to be answered and I knew that I had to become Orthodox but it, it took some time I had to actually go to an Orthodox Church before I was I was ready well it was an interesting experience because as I was reading many books about the Orthodox Church, finally. Um, I had a dream where I was, I was in an Orthodox Church, but I had never been to one yet. And it was uh, very specific, and uh, there were no pews, and there were icons everywhere, and people were lighting candles and crossing themselves and moving about. And uh, it was beautiful, it was beautiful. It was just a presence of prayer. And I woke up, and I wanted to experience that. So I, I uh, 
I went to a couple local Orthodox churches in Los Angeles, but it, they weren't quite like the dream that I'd had. And so I kept looking and uh, online, on the internet, I came across a website where the, the photo was from my dream. And it was, it was this is the church. So I called and uh, a wonderful priest, uh, Father John Strickland, answered the phone and he was from my home state, Washington State. He was a convert and um, that was the beginning. Well, it's interesting because when I, when I walked into the church, I left my family at home because I wanted to feel it out myself. And I knew God was taking me here, but it was still very uncomfortable and you know, sort of frightening a little bit. But I walked into the church and I was overwhelmed with this feeling that came over me. And this very, very persistent voice said, leave, run, get out of here. You don't want to be here. Go now, go. And it was very strong and my hands got hot and I, and I started feeling very anxious and, and uh, you know, everything in me wanted to leave. And I thought, what is this? I've been spending years reading, trying to find and I, and I knew that this is where God was, you know, taking me, and, and so it was, it, was, it was strange. And I prayed, and I felt uh, another, a different voice, a different presence say, No, stay for the whole thing, and then you'll know how you feel. So I thought, okay, I'll stay for the whole thing. And it was, it was very uncomfortable for probably about 45 minutes. I didn't know anybody. Uh, the icons were still very s scary. <laughs> and uh, foreign. It was just all very different. And after the homily, when the true Bikim began, I didn't know what it was at the time, but the true Bikim began. And the true Bikim began, and I went from feeling completely uncomfortable and anxious. I went from confe feeling completely uncomfortable and anxious to leave, and the whole place just became like light. And it was like, I don't know how to explain it. it, it the whole, it just changed, it sort of transfigured. <laughs> You know, and I start, started crying and and uh, felt the presence of God so heavily. I, I and um, I'd never seen such beautiful humility before God. And people were crossing themselves so beautifully and saying, "Lord, have mercy." And it it just I, I started praying to God, saying, "This I don't want to be anywhere else. I just want to be right here with the body of Christ." I don't care about worldly things, what's going on, you know, career pursuits, it doesn't matter. I just want to be right here.